Hey Columbus City Schools students and families. I'm Carla Hall and you may have seen me on the Food Network judging and hosting shows like Halloween Baking Championship or Holiday Baking Championship. I am really looking forward to joining you as we cook a meal together. Your demo is being presented by Ryan Bryson, chef and owner of Super Chef's restaurant right there in Columbus. And assisting him are Michael and Miles. They're both seniors in the culinary arts program at Columbus Downtown High School. They will be taking you through the preparation of glazed grilled chicken, cilantro pineapple rice, and fresh fruit skewers, which all sounds really delicious to me. Now let me tell you why. Because I truly believe that getting the whole family together in the kitchen and actually cooking together is a great way to create memories. And it gives us the opportunity to learn and practice important life skills. It also results in better reading habits. As families, some of our richest experiences are the ones created while interacting around the kitchen counter. Now, cooking is not only fun, but it also helps us grow as learners with skills such as reading and comprehension when you're following those directions. Math such as fractions and measurements. Science as in cooking temperatures or how food changes once it's cooked or seasoned. You know what else gets me excited? Learning different ways to combine a variety of ingredients and the foods from different cultures. Now, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm already getting excited for you to join us for some cooking today. So don't forget to bring your excitement and fun. Bon appetit. So the purpose of today's cooking demo is about community. It's about bringing families together so that we can have a space for dialogue. So we could talk about how our day was, how school going, do mental health checks, all while creating an amazing meal together. So today we're gonna have fun. Today we're gonna eat good. We're gonna sneak in a little bit of math and reading in there. Don't tell nobody, keep that alone. We're gonna sneak it in. And most importantly, what we're gonna create today is going to be fire. So today we are at Columbus Downtown High School and I am joined by two wonderful seniors who are part of the culinary arts program here. We have Michael and then we have Miles and they will be helping assist us today in our journey. So today me pon take you to the island, right? With these teams upon teams, right? We are going to go from downtown high school to the island. <laughs> All right, so the first thing that we are gonna work on today is our fruit skewers. And right now we have Miles and Mike chopping up the fruit for us for our skewers. You can have any type of fruit that you would like. Today we're working with pineapple, watermelon, strawberries, blueberries, and grapes. So parents, this is the first activity that you can have for your kids where you can become interactive. What I like to do is I let my children cut up the fruit for our fruit skewers. Only thing that we're looking for is about the same size and consistency, right? So we want our pineapples to pretty much be the same, our watermelon to pretty much be the same, and we gauge it based off of our strawberry. So we kind of want to keep it the same size of a strawberry. So while they're cutting the pieces into the sizes that we need, we'll start assembling just so you can see what it's going to look like when your children do it. We want to give a super big thanks to Miles and Mike for all their help today. They've been amazing. Anything you guys want to say? Thank you. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. All right, now that we have our fruit skewers assembled, we can hit them with some toppings. So if you want to go like a little spicy route, we got some tagine. So which is like a little spicy powder to kind of get it to like the Mexican vibe of our island vibe. So you can hit it with a little bit of that and it'll give it that type of little spicy kick to the sweetness of it. Also, we can go really, really sweet with some type of sugar. We can go sugar on one of them. And it's just like nature's candy, right? It makes it super, super sweet. We can do a little chocolate, a little chocolate drizzle any type of variation that you want to make sure that your kids eat your fruits, I'm all for it. Or we can do a little caramel, right? A little caramel drizzle never hurt nobody. 
And there you have it. Now, if you really want to get fancy, you could toast up some coconut, throw that on top of there. Hey, I'm not here to stop you. Oh, and on our tagine one, we can do some fresh basil on top of that just to give it a little bit more herbaceous type of vibe. All right, so now we're on to the cilantro pineapple rice. For us, we're gonna add two cups of rice. So my method is always for every cup of rice, I'm using about a cup and a half, a cup and three fourths of water. Once again, you don't wanna use too much water because it becomes extra gummy and that's not a good look for anybody. So I added my two cups of rice. Now I'm gonna add roughly almost three and a half to four cups of water. Great thing about this thing, all I have to do is press white rice, good to go. I can just leave it, forget about it, and come back to it whenever I need it. While the rice is either in the microwave or either in a rice cooker doing this thing, we wanna do some prep work so that we come out with the most wonderful rice possible. So first we're gonna start with our cilantro, and we wanna just chop it up into tiny pieces. You're gonna use about maybe two to three tablespoons. Once again, depending on how much rice that you use, you can always adjust the cilantro factor of how much goes in. My family, the more the merrier. Next, we go to our pineapple. And what we wanna do is have a diced pineapple for this recipe. So I like to cut it so that I have a flat surface. Once I cut it with a flat surface, I get all the excess pieces out of it. Once again, if you want to make this super easy, super convenient, you could buy either the canned pineapple or you could buy the pre-cut pineapple. Still, the recipe will be fantastic either way you go about it. You want to take that core out. Who wants the core of a pineapple? Certainly not I. And then once again, we want to dice the pineapple into small pieces. Yes, you want to taste it with every bite of the rice, but you don't want some big chunks of pineapple. So we want to dice it fairly as fine as we can. No uniformity, no chunks. This is homemade, right? As long as you put some love into it, it's all good. So once we got our pineapple good, then we want to take a lime because we absolutely got to hit it with that lime juice. And like I said, we're just doing all the prep work for now. So by the time our rice is either done cooking on the stove or out of that microwave, we'll have everything ready for it. Ta-da! With a little TV magic, our rice is ready for us. We wanna start with our butter. Great thing about butter, I just found this out not too long ago. Obviously, you can have the serving sizes on the package. So if you want a tablespoon, you can literally cut that off, predicate it off of the packaging, right? So I am going to take two tablespoons of butter and we wanna mix that in with the rice. And once again, like I said, we wanna add that creaminess factor to it. So we got our butter incorporated into it. Next, we wanna take a tablespoon of sugar, sprinkle that on there. Now we wanna incorporate that into our rice. Next, we wanna take our pineapples. And that's one, and that's two. And we're looking at about three tablespoons of pineapple to go into this rice. And once again, we just still wanna incorporate it all together. Mixing it all together, make sure that it all evenly distributed, right? Then we'll go to our cilantro. And once again, do the eyeball test. It's based off of what you and your family like, but you just wanna get that greenery incorporated into that rice. Oh man, I wish you guys could smell it. It smells amazing. We'll take a little bit more. We'll hit it with that lime juice. Make sure that you don't get any seeds in it. A little salt and pepper to taste. And there you have it. Cilantro pineapple rice, a little parsley for the razzle dazzle. A little 
garnish for you. Look like you got it right off the of TV. And there's your rice portion of the meal. All right, next we'll get to the chicken. So next to make this super interactive and fun for your children, you're gonna say, hey, they've already made the few skewers. They're kind of getting a little restless. What else can we do for them to keep them entertained and engaged in our theme dining experience? So what me and my family like to do, we like to create themes that go along with the food. So easiest thing you can do is get some brown sugar to serve as sand. or to serve as a dirt pit, depending on if you have a son or daughter and their interest in likes. Please don't tell my mama I'm out here wasting brown sugar, but it's the best type of sand I could come up with, right? Without getting actual sand, right? So we spread this out. So what you could do is get one of the pans from like out of the bottom of your oven to serve as like your surface area and you use that Put some parchment paper on there if you like, and now you got sand or you got a dirt pit. So if you got a daughter, now they got some beach scene for their Barbies and mermaids, and this will keep them entertained. And then if you have a son, we got all kind of monster truck rallies. So something that we do to keep our children engaged while we still have to finish our meal. So maybe you have to finish your chicken, maybe your rice isn't cooking all the way. Something that we can do to make sure that they still stay engaged, set up some type of play area for them. All right, on to the chicken. So now on to our glazed grilled chicken, right? So like I told you, we can either do our thighs or we can do our breasts, whichever is your preference. These are the clean chicken that we cleaned earlier today. Um, so the trick that I told you I was gonna show you for our chicken breast, do you see how it's uneven? So the thin side is obviously gonna cook faster than our thick side. And that's probably why most people think that chicken breast is dry. So. What I like to do, you can put it inside of like a Ziploc bag. You can take your meat tenderizer. And what we wanna do is flatten that surface area. And don't be afraid to get in there and really beat that. So, in doing so, what we did, we created an even surface so that it could cook evenly. And we also reduced the cooking time because we no longer have that thick back piece and that skinny front piece. We have a medium size all the way through. So if you do use chicken breast, I do recommend that you flatten it out a little bit so that you can control your cooking time a little better and reduce the chances of it being dry. All right. And trust me, I didn't always have a meat tenderizer growing up. My mom would use the wooden pan roller. Same thing, put it in the bag, beat it together. It achieves the same thing. So we got that flattened out. All right, so in a mixing bowl, we'll take our chicken and then we wanna add some of our spices in. So we're using teaspoons instead of tablespoons for this recipe. So we'll start off with teaspoon of salt. We got a little teaspoon of paprika, teaspoon of black pepper, teaspoon of Cajun seasoning, teaspoon of our little herb seasoning, teaspoon of garlic powder, teaspoon of our onion salt. <coughs> It'll get into your nose. And then a little shake of our Tony's Creole seasoning. We wanna give our chicken a mix in that. Don't be afraid of seasonings. Don't be afraid of spices. Learn what you love and incorporate that into your meats. So the next step to kick this grilled chicken up to the next notch, we're gonna add some of this KC Caribbean marinade. Once again, depending on how many chicken breasts you're doing or chicken thighs you're doing, I'm doing four, roughly a fourth of a cup of marinade. And what we wanna do is let this rest. So we wanna start heating up our pans 
We want our pans to have like a medium, low medium heat ratio. We got our oil, we want our oil, and we have olive oil, which is a good cooking agent because it doesn't burn too quickly. So we just wanna get our pans coated, get that oil all around that pan, so that once we put our chicken down, we wanna hear that sizzle, right? So we wanna get our marks on our chicken, uh, without burning it, of course, but we wanna get those marks on our chicken. So we'll let our oil heat up and then get right to it. I hope you guys are enjoying this demo as much as I am enjoying doing it. Um, I think this is a wonderful thing that Columbus City Schools is doing for the students. And once again, like I said, it's a great way to interact with the students. Great way to get them focused on reading when it comes to reading the ingredients. Great way to work on your math skills. Obviously, when you're talking about fractions with measurements and things of that nature. If you have little kids, it's great when you're doing your fruit skewers to work on shapes. You know, you can really make this educational as much as it is social and interactive. All right, I think our oil is about ready. And you heard that sizzle, right? So currently I have two breasts in and I have two thighs in. But once again, you can have all thighs, you can have all breasts. So regardless on which one you use, whether it's your breast or your thighs, you're looking at about four minutes per side as far as cooking time goes. So we wanna make sure that that chicken is cooked all the way through, right? We don't want any accidents. So four to five minutes per side, pretty much guarantee that your chicken will be all the way through. We'll have a thermometer to check it. You guys can always cut it open to check it, whatever method you wanna to use to check it to make sure that it's cooked all the way through. And we're looking for those beautiful marks on it. Look at that. That beautiful grilled chicken took me right to the island, right to the islands, man. Look at that, beautiful. For our breast, I really want us to finish it inside of the oven to make sure that it's thoroughly cooked all the way through. The risk that you run, once again, when you try to do it all on the stove top, is that it could get dry, right? Because you're trying to cook it all the way through. One thing you can do if you do not have the oven is turn down your heat and you can cook it slow. If you cook it slow, we can keep all the juices inside of it so that it won't be dry and that you can finish it on top of the stove top. Preference is yours. Whatever cooking level you're at, however you want to do it, perfectly fine. So for us, we're going to turn down the flame a little bit. Because all we got is the stove top. And we want to make sure that it's cooked thoroughly through. Like I said, four minutes per side is a great starting point to make sure that your chicken is cooked all the way through. On our chicken, we're looking for our internal heat of about 165. That's our safe zone. That's our zone that we know that our chicken is thoroughly cooked through, safe to eat. At home, while your chicken is doing its thing on one burner, you should focus on the sauce on the next burner, right? So for your children, maybe they only like barbecue sauce, then make this a barbecue sauce dish. So this Gordon Signature Tropical Rum It'll give you that island vibe that we are looking for. It's fantastic. It'll complement the rice very well. So no, this isn't a sponsor to add, but I love this tropical rum sauce. Also, this Kentucky bourbon sauce, I live by it. It'll give it that nice bite, right? So that bourbon kind of sinks through into it. Beautiful, beautiful barbecue sauce. And once again, just tell your kids it's barbecue sauce. It'll work exactly the same way. But this one too, phenomenal. Lastly, our good favorite faithful <laughs> Sweet Baby Ray's. If you just want barbecue sauce, you can always just do barbecue sauce on top of it. So if we are gonna create a glaze, right? We'll put our sauce in our pan, we'll reduce it down. Then we'll glaze our chicken with a paintbrush or something to glaze it on top of it. We'll put it in the oven to finish it. If not, perfectly fine. We'll just treat them as dipping sauces. Once your chicken has the desired grill marks you're looking for, 
take it out of the pan and let it rest. That's the step that most people skip. You want it to rest, get, build all that flavor inside of it. Let it just chill out and do its thing. While it's chilling, let's get to our sauce. Once again, whatever sauce you would like to use, if you wanna make a homemade sauce, good bases are Worcestershire, ketchup as your base, build up a barbecue sauce from there, some honey, some brown sugar, perfectly fine. Or like I said, a great base is our good old handy Sweet Baby Ray's. Add on whatever flavor component you want from there. You just want this to reduce down so that if you're gonna glaze it on top, you don't want it to start from cold. Glaze it on top, throw it in the oven. Or like I said, if you're gonna make it a dipping sauce, it's even better when it's hot as opposed to a cold dipping sauce. So now we're ready to cut our chicken. I like to slice mine on like an angled bias just so it looks good for the plating. Like I said, however you want to do it is perfectly fine. You could cut it into cubes. You can cut it into strips. You could leave it whole, whatever you want to do. So we like to fan it out a little bit. If you ever want to achieve the rice look that you get at like hibachi restaurants or something like that, take your measuring cup, stuff your rice inside of it, flip it upside down, get a top a little pat. and it'll look just like the hibachi restaurants. I like to give it a little garnish on top. Then my trick for my chicken is that I put my knife under it so it doesn't fall and it stays fanned out. So then we always gotta hit it with a little razzle dazzle. So I come along with my parsley to make it beautiful. And there you have it. Glazed grilled chicken, cilantro, pineapple, rice. And you can't forget the fruit skewers, right? Dinner served. Thank you again for joining us on our first stop of the Pathway Express. Hopefully you learned something today that you can apply. Once again, like I said, get the math, get the reading, a little bit of math from the fractions, a little bit of reading from reading the recipes, but hopefully you continue your journey to success and always be curious. Thank you again.